These are five easy steps to elevate your makeup. You know, if you think your makeup could use a little bit of extra something, keep watching. First step is a hydrating primer. Funny enough, none of these are actually a hydrating primer, but, but they all hydrate a lot. These two are protective primers, and this one's actually just a moisturizer. Today I'm going to use this one. Most people think that a hydrating primer will end up looking greasy or oily throughout the day, but it's actually not like that at all. A hydrating primer is meant to maintain your skin hydrated throughout the day without sweating it all off. So it's more about the finish you want to achieve. So in my opinion, if it, even if you have oilier skin, um, this will do wonders for you because your skin might not need to produce that much oil throughout the day as long as you set it well, of course. Okay, primer is on. As mentioned, this is actually a protective primer, but it's very hydrating and glowy. I love it for under the makeup because it doesn't really feel like a primer. It feels more like a moisturizer. I don't know, I just prefer primers that actually don't feel like primers, if that makes sense. Let me apply the foundation very quick and I'll be right back. Step two is light and shadows, usually known as concealer and contour, but I want you to think about it more strategically. Light bring your face forward and shadows bring your face backward. I'm going to do a bit of spot concealing before doing all of that. I'm using a concealer shade that's closer to my skin and then to highlight I'm going to use a lighter shade. Think about your face structure and which part you'd like to bring forward and which part you'd like to keep backwards. This is obviously going to depend a lot depend on your face shape, so person to person is going to vary a little bit. But essentially, this will be the parts that you would like to highlight or bring forward. So chin. Oh, oh no. I got the wrong shade. So chin, nose, forehead, under eyes. Arch of the brows, side of the nose, and maybe jawline here, right under the cheekbone. But I personally prefer highlighting the corners of the eyes right here instead of the jawline, just to balance out my face shape. If you notice, I have a wider face down here. So if I bring this forward it's going to be give the illusion that this is going to be as big or as wide as my lower part whereas if i highlight it with jawline it's going to appear wider in my jawline which i don't want i don't want to like you know anyways now for the parts that we want to bring backwards we want to use a contour shade which is a little bit cool toned and we want to use a kind of precise brush for this. Again, the contouring technique is going to vary a lot depending on what you want to achieve. I often just see people on the internet saying like, this contouring technique is wrong, this is right. And I'm like, the truth about it is there's no wrong or right. There's your preference. Maybe you want to highlight your round cheekbone. Maybe you want to highlight your bone structure and everything's fine it's just preference so today i'm just going to do a basic contouring based on my face shape and that's it so with the cool tone side of this one this is actually very clever because you have a cool tone and a warm tone so you have everything in one a contouring and a bronzing side uh this one's from kbd beauty i will link everything below so don't worry under the cheekbone we're going to blend that out later, so don't worry. Eye crease. Size of the nose. Jawline right here. The nose a little bit here. Right here on the size of the forehead. Okay, now we have it all together. I'm gonna blend this out really quickly and apply my bronzer and my blush. And I'll be right back for the third step. Step three is setting and highlighting strategically. This step might look not really important, but if you do this correctly, you will look like you had your makeup professionally done. If I were you, I wouldn't skip this step. Apply a loose powder everywhere you put concealer. Make sure there are no creases before you set, otherwise you'll set the creases. 
sides of the nose, center of the forehead, chin. If you did jawline, do the jawline as well. Even if you didn't put powder there, you can put a little bit right now. And don't forget the upper lip, even if you didn't put concealer there. Okay, but now we're going to use a finishing powder. So grab a fluffy brush like that. We're going to add this to certain areas like here under the eye. Chin. This is going to make it a little bit extra. Now we'll add some highlighter to the areas that stand out the most. So these areas are the tip of the nose, maybe the bridge of the nose if you would like to highlight that as well. I don't know if you can see the highlighter. I don't know. Top of the cheek. This is my favorite part. Brow bone. If you add a little bit here, right where the brow bone and the cheekbone connect. Oh! <laughs> Grab a smaller brush to highlight the inner corner. Highlight the cupid's bow. Fourth step is setting spray. This will bring everything together, melt everything together, and make it look a lot more natural since the powders are going to kind of melt with the rest of the makeup. Shake that really well. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter with vitamin c i personally prefer this one because it's more hydrating than the regular one i mean that's just my preference because i have drier skin if you have oilier skin combination i think the regular one is going to be better for you but if you have drier skin this is amazing the only thing i don't like about setting sprays is that it gets all over your hair and your clothes and everything. Then I need like a setting spray cape or something. <laughs> so I'm, now I'm going to let that dry completely while I do my eyes. I might just film that separately in case you want like an in-depth tutorial of the eye look. So just drop a comment below if you want to see that and I'll post that. Okay, we're back with the eyes. And now you might think we're all done, but we have one step left. And in my opinion, it's the best one. Step five is reapply bronzer and blush. <laughs> These two tend to fade quicker, especially the blush. Like, where did it go? You can either go with more cream products or powder products, but I just think it makes more sense going in with powder design, at least for the bronzer. I would apply me tea. I would apply cream blush again if I wanted to achieve like a dewy finish. And that's actually what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to do powder bronzer and cream blush. So I'm going to grab kind of a fluffy brush for the bronzer. Not this one, not this one. I actually want this bronzer. It's, it's literally so beautiful. All over. See, and I already have a bit more contrast and color. Same here. It's literally the same blush. I'm going to apply blush here. Oh, see that? Oh, also on these areas, because I just think it makes it so cute and adorable. And also a bit more natural, like sun-kissed, you know? <laughs> if you think you went too far, just no problem. Just grab Beauty Blender and blend everything together. It's fine. Just be very gentle because we have powders underneath it's all good it's all good okay and we're done this is the final look with all those steps that we mentioned let me know if you try this and if you do please let me know how it worked for you i'm always happy to know if you want to see any other videos on this channel let me know below if you have any suggestions thank you so much for watching again and i'll see you in the next one bye more strategic our other plan. Uh, no, pongas. Oh, bien.